of Ukraine as it comes under uh, renewed fire. Let's bring in ABC's Kenneth Moten and ABC News National Security and Defense Analyst Mick Mulroy for more on this. Kenneth, so what has been the U.S. response to It's almost hard to imagine that this war could expand, uh, but in Ukraine, they've, they've been dealing with it now for seven months, but it did. This is clearly a new phase initiated by Vladimir Putin. How's the U.S. responding? Yeah, we are hearing from uh, President Biden, who uh, delivered a very strong condemnation and a statement uh, earlier today, no surprise. Uh, and the president not only condemned the Russian missile attacks, but he also offered condolences uh, to the families and loved ones of the victims of that attack. And he reaffirmed U.S. support for Ukraine. I'm going to read part of the statement from the president. He said these attacks only further reinforce our commitment to stand with the people of Ukraine for as long as it takes. Alongside our allies and partners, we will continue to impose costs on Russia for its aggression, hold Putin and Russia accountable for his atrocities and war crimes, and provide the support necessary for Ukrainian forces to defend their country and their freedom as well. And Terry, he went on to say that these attacks once again demonstrate the utter brutality of Putin's illegal war on the Ukrainian people, and he called on Russia to end its aggression and remove troops from Ukraine. Hmm. All right, that's that's from the White House, and uh, this is the Russian way of war. Mick, you know, what is really going on here? How do, how do you read these attacks, what they tell us about Vladimir Putin, uh, and what they tell us about what impact it might have on the war? So, Terry, if you look at the history of uh, President Putin, he almost always escalates. Uh, they, he never de-escalates. And quite frankly, he can see, as well as the rest of the world, uh, that he's losing in Ukraine. So militarily, his forces are losing uh, during this counteroffensive by the Ukrainians. Uh, he's looking for a way to stop that initiative. Uh, I think the attack on the bridge that links uh, mainland Russia to Crimea was a valid military target. It supports the Ukrainian, I mean, the Russian military there. But the response was obviously not valid military targets. It was civilian infrastructure. It was indiscriminate uh, killing of civilians. Uh, so this is what Vladimir Putin does, and this is what most people are concerned about uh, going forward. Yeah, th th this may be a, a foolish question, but uh, the sanctions have really clamped down on Russia. He's been firing missiles, you know, now for seven months. Is he going to run out? Well, he may. This is very difficult. This is one of the reasons why you see the reports that uh, he's trying to purchase weapons that he sold to North Korea. These are very old. Uh, and he has serious problems keeping up with uh, uh, building these type of systems because of the export controls uh, that are now in place against Russia. So uh, the Ukrainians have the advantage here because of the U.S. and NATO supply, supplying uh, weapons and munitions, where Russia does not. So where does this go, Mick? Uh, is, this, is it possible that we're going to see a, a Ukrainian victory, or is this really just going to grind on? Ukrainians have the advantage, but neither side can knock the other out. So unfortunately, I don't see an end to this anytime soon. One of the things that the U.S., NATO, and quite frankly, countries around the world can do is provide these advanced air and missile defense systems so Russia can't use uh, this indiscriminate uh, missile and rocket strikes against civilian populations. Once that's taken away from them, uh, they don't have many places to go. Uh, it's, it's concerning because Putin generally, like, like I already said, escalates, but we need to cut off his options to do this type of atrocities in the future. And that means providing them with the weapons defensive systems that they need now. All right, Mick Mulroy, Kenneth Moten, thanks very much for that.